name is John Glover, and I'm the head of research at a, a company here in, based here in Dublin called Alien. Um, and we are a sort of natural language processing and sort of news intelligence company. Um, so yeah, so historically we've been, I guess, sort of NLP as a service where we would have an API and people would pay to make requests and we'd give them responses um, for sort of tasks like sort of document classification, sentiment analysis and that sort of thing. Um, and sort of more recently, we're more, I guess, sort of end-to-end -end sort of news intelligence where we ingest a lot of news content and run it through other machine learning models. And then we make that accessible to people to query downstream. And I'm not sure I really have a, a favorite. If I had to pick, I'm going to pick something sort of broad. Um, it's maybe something like backpropagation, <laughs> I guess, which really enables us to do a lot of the, I guess, the work we're doing with deep learning these days um, is training with gradient descent. Um, yeah, so I guess if I had to pick one algorithm, I'd pick that. But I mean, as, as a concept as well, and maybe cheat a bit and say, well, like the idea of, I think, dimensionality reduction or embedding things is also a, a super powerful concept. So that's one that we practically used, I guess, the most, maybe. It's difficult to say. I mean, probably the just the breadth of skills that you needed to get started. Um, so yeah, I've been doing this role for five years now. Uh, I guess when I was starting, yeah, you know, you have to obviously know a lot of sort of maths or linear algebra, calculus, statistics, yeah, you need to know a lot of uh, software engineering if you want to actually deploy things at a company. Um, and then there was the tooling, I would guess, well, I would say wasn't as, you know, maybe advanced as it is now. So you have to figure out a whole lot of tooling just to get things running in production as well. So it's, you really needed to be, uh, you yeah, have a lot of breadth across all of these areas. Um, so that was probably, yeah, the hardest is to go from just sort of a, I mean, my background is more, I guess, data infrastructure analytics and that side of things. So there's quite a lot of uh, sort of ML tooling ramp up that you needed early on. Um, now, maybe not quite as much, but. That's, it's hard to say if we have an average day in particular. I mean, maybe more like an average week, um, but yeah. so it kind of depends which projects we're working on, um, what's going on at the moment. But for example, things like, you know, talking to product to understand uh, either what the needs are for like new releases or you know what the issues are with ongoing things, um, and then sort of looking at data, doing error analysis, coming up with hypotheses to test, um, sort of yeah, then sort of building models, changing you know making changes, waiting around for things to train, yeah, um, do evaluations, deploy things, uh, maybe build a new prototype, get feedback, um, you know maybe do some literature review, reading papers. So, I mean, these are sort of the normal tasks. I was saying you sort of pick sort of two or three of those every day and you're doing some of that. And sort of that's the sort of the list of things that happens that gets over about a week. Um, but yeah, we try to go through cycles as quickly as possible. We sort of go from, you know, what's the problem to here's a working prototype of something. It varies a lot day to day. Yeah, we don't have a, a specific day, I would say. Yeah, it really depends what the project is and what the, what the problems are that we see. So we're quite problem focused, what's wrong with this or what do we need to do new? So again, this is, it's difficult to just pick one thing. Um, I mean, if you have to pick, if you're allowed to pick a few things, you can, there's probably like a lot of these sort of having the sort of technical basics, it's like we've been really strong in the sort of the maths uh, and the, I guess the software engineering side. Um, yeah, so be able to sort of go from, I guess, concept to production, like that whole flow, but there's, there's quite a lot of skills in there. Yeah. Um, so if, if I have to pick one thing, I would say the most important thing really is the ability, I guess, to learn in a completely self-directed way how to master new skills. So it's quite a, a meta a meta skill. So the ability to so learning to learn and be able to do this effectively, I think is the most important thing because you know our industry is kind of moving so fast that it's quite unlikely that you will be able to, you know, learn something and then just keep doing that for your career. So you're gonna to have to change, you know, the field changes and you have to adapt. Um, so the ability to do that, I think yeah. is probably the one thing. Um, and I guess many people say the point of a PhD is to learn how to do research. So it's kind of <laughs> a, quite a similar concept on this, the ability to learn how to do new things.